Welcome to ACTL 1101 Introduction to Actuarial Studies. My name is Benjamin Avamsi. I'm an Associate Professor in the School of Risk and Actuarial Studies. So before I talk about the course, I'd like to tell you a bit more about myself. I was born in Switzerland and my mother tongue's French, if you haven't worked out my accent yet. Um, so um, I was born in a town with a beautiful area by the Lake of Geneva. Uh, there's a picture here. Um, you can see uh, around there there's, there's a town by the lake. That's where I was born and, and I grew up. So I trained as a, as a Swiss actuary uh, at the University of Lausanne in Switzerland. And I've practiced a bit as, a, as, a, as an actuary. So I've done a few things, but probably the, the most important job I did before joining academia full time was being chairman of the board of a Swiss pension fund with about uh, 200 insured, 200, no sorry, thousands of insured, but 200 uh, employers affiliated to the pension fund. And when I did my PhD, I thought I'd try uh, academia full time. And I ended up in Australia, right? Um, and I love this country. Now I've been here for 10 years. Um, with, um, with my family, I have a wife and two kids. We've also lived for one and a half years in Montreal. And this is what it looks like. Um, a lot of snow, we like the snow, but we reckon we, 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 we prefer uh, the, the Great Barrier Reef and, and the fish in the Great Barrier Reef. So we came back a few years ago and, and, um, and we are now here. So um, uh, I really look forward to um, teach you this course. And this video is about um, giving you a lot of in useful information, I hope useful, but important information about the course. The objective of this course is an introduction to actuarial studies, as the title suggests. Um, this involves two dimensions, or I have actually two objectives in this course. The first is to give you a framework to understand what you're going to learn in the rest of the degree. The level two courses that you'll do mostly in the second year will equip you with advanced statistical and, and mathematical modeling techniques, but you won't necessarily have the time to talk about uh, actuarial practice in those courses uh, in, in much detail. And it's in the third year, in the level three courses, that you'll actually talk about how to apply those techniques to actuarial pro problems. So the objective of this course is to give you an idea of what actuarial practice is about, so that you know the context and the framework and why you're learning all those things. Otherwise, it's a bit hard to get motivated and understand how the things are being applied or used. Um, at the same time, uh, my objective is, is to actually allow you to explain uh, with uh, confidence and expertise and, and hopefully as well some excitement what actuaries do. Um, you probably have some idea of that by now, but I don't think you, you know that very well yet, and that's fine because it, it's, uh, it's, uh, complete, it's rather complicated or, or, or maybe more complex than you might think. A lot of people don't really know what actuaries do. So we'll talk a lot about the actuarial practice um, so that you can give examples and get a sense actually of the different practice areas in the field. So we'll talk about um, uh, two different types of things. Um, related to that, the, the, some basics of actuarial techniques, but also the practice areas. And underpinning all that, uh, there's a third dimension, which is um, understanding data. So de um, gathering insights about data. Um, that's what you'll do in the labs. Um, we'll talk about that in the structure in a little second. So here's the structure of the course. Uh, this big table here with, a lots, with lots of colors. Um, I remind you, I, I told you there's two types of things we're going to see in the lectures at least. Um, the first one is, is basics of fundamental techniques that are being used by actuaries. Um, really thresholds concepts that hopefully will help you um, achieve deeper learning in the, in, in the following courses and give you a, a sense and, and a taste of what you're going to do um, in, in the more advanced courses. So these technical bits or quantitative bits are, appear in green in that structure. Um, so for those ones, what we'll do is uh, we'll talk about them. I'll teach them in class uh, in the lectures. And then um, typically you'll have two tutorials per week of lecture on those ones. So the tutorials, the second column in the structure there, the tutorials will mostly be on the green bits of the course. So the, the, the technical bits where, where you'll have 
um, problems to solve, mathematical problems to solve. The second dimension appears in yellow. Um, those are the, the, the lectures where we'll talk about practice areas. And we'll do slightly different activities about that, and I'll talk about that uh, later on when we talk about the resources of the course. Um, those ones, you don't, we don't really need tutorials because there's nothing to practice. Uh, we talk about practice, uh, the, the actual practice areas. Uh, we'll have interviews and, and articles we'll discuss in class. That will happen in the lectures as well. Now there's a third type of uh, activities happening in the course, and that will be in the labs. That's the last column um, in orange. So this is about gathering insights about data, but also doing some programming. So you learn, um, so most of those labs will be um, about learning of, about a, a st statistical software called R, like the, the letter R. Um, and, and this is the, the gold standard now around the world for um, statistical analysis of data. So we'll talk about data and how to present data insights visually, numerically, um, but uh, you'll also learn about simple programming about R. And you'll use R later on in the whole degree. Uh, in, this, in the level two courses, you'll, you'll see how to use R to do advanced statistical analysis. And in the, third, in the level three courses, you'll learn how to use R to actually do some actuarial uh, um, analysis or actuarial modeling. So you'll, you'll do that in the labs. So in terms of how we're going to teach uh, the things, the lectures of, um, in a way, traditional lectures in that um, I come and I'm going to teach you uh, some of those concepts and we'll have some, some examples in class as well. But it's not flipped or it's not really blended in that, in that perspective. It's, it's, um, uh, you'll have, you may have to do a bit of reading before the lecture, but well, I'll teach you the, the, the main contents. What's going to be a bit special, perhaps, is that I'll try to use active learning as much as possible so that the idea here is to get you to do things in class and actually be active in class uh, because I want you to come um, and I want you to, to get value out of the lectures. So it's not just about me talking for two hours and, and you sit there on Facebook, but you actually can uh, interact with me and ask me questions directly on the spot. To facilitate that, we'll try a new thing. Uh, we'll have two tutors in class um, for during all the, all the lectures. And these tutors will be on what we call Microsoft Teams. So it's a, it's a tool where people can interact online and ask questions, a bit like Facebook, but uh, it's a Microsoft tool. So you'll be able to ask questions directly during the lecture in that tool. And the two tutors will be answering your question during the lecture. Hopefully there'll be lots of questions, a lot of, lots of answers. But we'll also stop regularly um, so that I can uh, uh, walk around in, in class and the tutors can do that as well to answer the questions orally rather than, than online. Also, if there's a total panic and you, you have no idea what I'm talking about and everyone has no idea what I'm talking about, then the tutors can actually stop me and say, Benjamin, you need to stop. <laughs> You've lost everyone. So that hopefully this, not hap this won't happen, but if it happens, then it's very useful so I can stop and, and try to address what wasn't clear. So that's something we'll try. I've never done that before. Um, uh, I don't think many, many people do that. Um, so um, we'll try that. The objective really is I want, I want to keep you with me during the lectures and um, make sure that you understand what's happening because otherwise there's no point all of us coming in the same room for a couple of hours if there's no interaction. So we'll, we'll try to maximize that interaction in classes, in classes uh, as much as possible. In the tutorials, you'll, these are also interactive tutorials and we'll have some team activities and some, um, some exercises you can do before the tutorials but these will support the green lectures. Um, so the technical uh, uh, aspects where we know we need to practice to really understand what's going on. So these will be run by tutors. And in the labs, in a way, the, these, are, these are labs because you'll be behind computers. These are con computer labs. And you'll do th stuff in class to uh, do active learning as I have uh, described before. But in a way, these are lectures. So there'll be tutors there as well, but they will be teaching you the R or the main R components live, um, uh, but in an interactive way. So you can learn and, and do the things as, as we go um, during the labs. 
So really what we want or what we would like is to have you there in those face-to-face -face components. Um, in order to encourage you to be there, we will try to make them as interactive as possible. Um, of course, uh, we need your help because it can't be interactive if you're not there and if you're not participating. But I really strongly encourage to do that. That, that will maximize your learning in there. And we'll try to we have tried to design all the slides and the activities so that they can be an interaction in all those face-to-face -face components. You'll probably have noticed there's two other colors in the table. Um, there's a blue color, so this is when things happen that are not necessarily uh, green or yellow. Uh, this can be information about the assignment. Um, there's also a couple of uh, guest lectures that you have to attend and are accessible and so on, but they're not really green or yellow lectures. And the red bits are the assessments. Um, and we'll talk about the assessment uh, in a little while. One other thing that no one really likes, I know students hate it, the lecturers hate it, uh, it's assessment, but unfortunately it's necessary to make sure that the degree has uh, lots of value and is recognized, it's assessment. So there'll be a number of assessments in uh, the course. Of course, the idea is to align the assessment with um, the objectives of the course and the things we're going to teach. Um, and, and also to encourage you to um, work continuously. So in that spirit, we have four assessments in the course. The first category of assessment are called mini assignments. And that's about the labs. And the idea is, is to have a maximum one hour assignment you have to do for every week of uh, lab materials. So what happens is in the lab you learn things, then you have exercises you can do, um, there's, a, there's a reference book, and then you have uh, quiz questions on, that you can do online, and once you have 80% uh, of the responses correct in the quiz, then you can submit a mini assignment. And all the questions of the mini assignments, they're already on the website, um, you can already look at them, and the objective of the mini assignment is just to validate this little bit of learning you've done in that week. Um, and you have one week to do it, it's due on the Friday of the week following the week of labs. And um, it's meant to not last you more than an hour to do. And as long as you've had a decent attempt, you'll get the marks. Uh, so we look at it and say, have exercise judgment, but we assume everyone will get the marks as long as you submit and you have a decent attempt. So you can be wrong, you can say I have no idea how to do it, but here's how I've tried and still get the mark. The idea is to, to give you an encouragement for a continuous uh, work in that space, because if you leave it until the last week to start learning about how to code in R, it's not going to go well. And also you'll need it for the assignment, which, well, let's say it's the second assessment item, the assignment. Uh, the assignment will be teamwork. But we're committed in the faculty to actually develop your teamwork skills and um, we want to build that up um, from the beginning. Um, I don't know if you've already done uh, the, the first year management course, you might be doing it in parallel with the first year course. This is where um, you will talk about really team teamwork, but we'll talk about it in the course as well a little bit. And teamwork is really important in actuarial studies because you're, doing thing you're supporting a, a number of other stakeholders in the different companies and, and you need to be able to work with others. So that's a really an essential skill for uh, uh, an, a useful actuary to have. It's to be able to work with others. And it's hard and it's not, doesn't always go well. So the earlier you get experience with it, the better. So we have this teamwork uh, assessment in uh, the first year course. Um, well, you, you'll get to learn how we'll assess the teams also in, in uh, the later years, teamwork in the later years. So you'll be assigned to teams according to your tutorial enrollment. So your team members will be in the same tutorial group as uh, your tutorial group. But then the team composition, um, I'll do it randomly. Right? So you don't get to choose um, who you are in your team beyond, I suppose, you can choose in which tutorial you go, but. Um, uh, I do random allocation of teams from three to six uh, persons. So the, the assignment will be a teamwork exercise where you'll have to analyze data and get insights from it. 
and they'll be component of the marks that relate to uh, the, the output of the assignment, so the analysis, but also relating to teamwork. And we'll get to, to talk about that a bit more a bit later. The third assessment item is the midterm exam, which will be, uh, I think, around week six, but that's in, in the schedule. Uh, the midterm exam will be a more traditional problem, solution, questions in writing. So it's individual, of course. Um, uh, there is, uh, it's, it's in, the, in, the, in, in the course schedule on the Friday afternoon. Um, there's examples, plenty of examples of such exams on the website, so you can have an idea of what the, the midterm exam would look like. And it will cover uh, the first few weeks of uh, the course. You can check the course outline for the details. The last assessment item is the final exam. And in the final exam, you'll have questions about both um, the lab, so the R and data, well, the R, let's say R um, component, and the rest of the green and the yellow lectures. Right, so you have 45% of multiple choice questions on R and 55% of open questions on uh, the green and the yellow lectures. Um, and again, there's examples on the website about that. So that's about assessment. And we'll try to give you as much feedback on your performance as possible throughout the semester. I've already talked to you about Teams when I talked about the, ass the assignment. Let me tell you a bit more about Teams. As I said before, we, we really convinced that um, being able to work in Teams is an essential quality for actuaries. It might be surprising to you right now, but um, we'll develop that more in the lecture as well, and I'll give you plenty of examples, and I'll come back to that again. So it's really important that you develop those skills of teamwork. On top of that, actuarial studies is not an easy degree, as you might know or guess. One of the things that will help you go through the degree is a support network and work with others. So it's not only just about getting the assignments done, uh, it's also about working with, with new friends, existing friends, but also new friends, working with friends throughout your degree. That, and that will help you a lot going through the courses, achieve deep understanding of the concepts, and, um, and do well. So um, we, the whole course has been designed so that there's a number of things you can do in teams. Um, in the tutorials, we'll have team activities, you have the assignment that's a team activity. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you about things you can do in teams every week. Um, there'll, there'll be a week, weekly schedule. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, so I really encourage you to work with your team from week two. Right? I'll do the, the team allocations at the beginning of week two. You'll, you'll get to meet your, your teammates in your tutorials in week two. And you'll have to do something together straight away because there's something you have to do by the end of week two is nominate a team leader or a team um, facilitator, if, you, if you'd rather call him or her that way. And you'll have to design a team contract. So in that contract, you'll say, here's the role of the different people. Here's how we're going to uh, um, organize ourselves for the assignment. And I'll give you the assignment question um, it will be on the website by then, uh, if it's not already there once, now that you watch this video. So you'll, you'll know what the assignment looks like. And you'll be able to do a schedule. You also, you know, in the past I've seen contracts where they said, if someone doesn't turn up to a meeting or is late to a meeting, they need to buy a coffee to for all the other ones. You can have a, a penalty mechanisms like that if, if uh, the team members don't follow the rules. The point is, Talk about how you're going to work together in your team, what the rules are, how you're going to achieve at least uh, uh, getting an assignment on time for the course, because that's something you'll have to do anyway. Um, so um, this week two is really is the moment when you should get together with your team, get to know each other, start working together. And, and there'll be things you'll be able to do together straight away. You can work on the tutorials, you can talk about the lectures, you can start talking about the assignment. And the earlier you establish relationships and ways of working together, the better your results will be in the, in the assignment. And you know, if, they, if there are going to be issues with your team, and there will be teams with some issues, I can already tell you with so many students, that will happen. Um, then it's better if you resolve them, if you work through them 
earlier than three days before the assignment is due. So I really encourage you to um, work with your teams and, and, and create a team environment and a team dynamics as early as possible in the course. So we're going to talk about that a bit in the lectures, but there's also um, one tool that's there to support you in building your team dynamics and working together. You don't have to use it, but it's there for you um, to help you th do that. And um, uh, also that's where you'll have to upload your, your contract. It's called Microsoft Teams. Unsurprisingly, right? It's called Teams. It's for Teams, that's great. Uh, last year we used it in the course for the first time. Um, first time I think at UNSW in the big course, we used it last year and probably one of the first times in the world for teaching in a big course. It took us a bit of, uh, a bit of time last year to get that uh, to work because it was still in, in trial. Uh, but now it's in the whole suite and you have access to it as students and we're going to use it again because it worked really well last year. The students said that it really helped with communication with their team. It created a sense of community in the course and it was meant that people were inclusive. And the good thing about it is you can like posts, you can put documents, you can put uh, GIFs, images, uh, things like that. It, it's a bit like Facebook. Right? But again, you, won't have, you don't have to use it, but if you use it, it's there for you to use. Um, so, so, that's, so that's the team aspect of the course. It goes in the spirit and in what I would like you to do, it goes well beyond just doing an assignment together. Um, and uh, uh, we'll talk about that again throughout the semester. Okay, so now resources in the course. Um, there's a lot of them. So, just to have a, a one way of, of organizing them, let's talk about the three different types of things we're going to do in the course. So uh, first the green, the green lectures. So the resources you have for the green lectures are, well, lecture slides, uh, you'll come to lectures. There's a textbook that we're going to use, not, not the whole of the textbook, but some parts of the textbook and the, and the bits you'll have to read and that are accessible will be clearly communicated to you uh, during the lecture. Um, there's tutorials and solutions to the tutorials as well. And finally, um, last year we developed three videos or video scribes, so there's animation, animated videos about three of the really threshold concepts that I really want you to understand um, by the end of this course. The next dimension is the yellow, so the practice areas. When I restructured the course a bit more than a year ago, I thought, well, we should talk about practice areas and, and tell the students what the different practice areas do, what's happening in the, in the, the field uh, at the moment. And uh, the best persons to talk about that really are people from the industry. So we went out and uh, interviewed UNSW alumni who are now industry leaders who talked about the different practice areas. And we've put that on videos and they're all available um, uh, on YouTube or at least on the website. And we'll talk about those videos in class. Um, we'll discuss them and some elements of them. This will be complemented with some industry articles. So articles that have been written by actuaries for actuaries about uh, um, topical issues. So we'll discuss that in class as well. And we'll have uh, guest lectures. Um, now for the, the, oh actually there's another one there because there's the practice but also this is a university and you'll be taught by a range of lecturers over the next few years and the role of the university is to transmit knowledge so that we hope to do that well in the lectures but it's also about creating knowledge and um, everyone in the school is research active and uh, so I thought well I'll interview all the school staff also put that on video and ask them to talk about their research areas. So you'll have access to those videos, which has, you know, we are killing two birds with the same stone. First, you get to know who your future lecturers are, because they'll be on the video, you can see their face, you can hear them talk, hear their accent, um, but also you'll know about the research they do. And that relates, of course, to some of the actuarial practice areas. So the third dimension are the R labs. In the R labs, well, there'll be the slides, but the slides will be a bit particular. They, 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 they're in a format called R Markdown. So these are slides, we will give you the full code, 
These are slides where you have embedded code and you can actually run the R code within the slide, which means that, remember the active learning I talked about before? This means that when you have your slide loading on your computer, you'll be able to change the, the code and run it. So we'll tell you, you know, this bit of code is doing this. If you change this to that, then it will do that. You'll be able to do it straight away and run the code straight on the slides. Um, there's also a textbook for the R um, labs. I encourage you to, to buy the textbook. It's good quality hardback textbook that's written by a colleague, um, mainly uh, here from UNSW, Pierre Lafayette de Michaud, who's uh, teaching the School of Mathematics and Statistics. And it's really good because it's, it has been somewhat written with actuaries in mind. It's really, it's a book about R. It's not about it's not a book about doing X or Y with R. It's really a book about R itself. And um, its, it's coverage in, from a statistical perspective kind of match the, the, the actuarial syllabus from North America. So it's probably a good resource for you to have, um, well, throughout the course, because that's a textbook, but also it might be useful to you in the later years, in, in, in future courses. Um, on top of that, the textbook is giving you a discount this year on the textbook. So, you know, if, if, you, uh, if you're so inclined, um, go there before, before the, the, they all disappear. So that's the resources for uh, the different things we're going to teach in the course. Now there's resources that go across all that. Um, there's the course website. Um, the course website is also color-coded and the, the structure you've seen before in the video will be there as well with active links to the different, different sections of the course. Uh, uh, you have different sections of the website. And there'll also be um, uh, Microsoft Teams, which I've talked about already. Hey, so we've talked about all the things we'll, have, we'll do in the course, how you'll be assessed about them, what the resources you have. Um, but I suppose you're wondering, how, how will I get help? How, can, how will I get support? So there's a whole range of things we'll do to try and support your learning. Um, one I already mentioned is you can get support from your friends, right? um, from your team members and other people in the course. And I really encourage you to do that again, and I'll say it again. But of course, we're here to help. So um, attend the lectures, I'll be there in the lectures, and I'm happy to ask, answer questions afterwards. Um, I'll also have consultation hours uh, on the Mondays before the lecture, not just before the lecture because I, I like to focus on the lecture just before that, but in the morning there'll be an hour of consultation where you can come and talk to me um, uh, in just in front of the school office. And there will be also one hour of consultation on Tuesday afternoon and Wednesday afternoon with tutors. They'll ro we've rostered them out to do that. And uh, um, we'll make sure that in every week there's at least one um, one tutor who's, who knows what's happening in the R labs and one tutor who knows what's happening in the tutorials. Right. Probably most of them can answer questions about both dimensions, but there is kind of a focus uh, for both of those uh, consultation hour, hours. So that's for the face-to-face. -face. Um, but then um, usually the, the, the support happens online. Right. So I, I, we won't really answer questions on emails because it helps only you and your big community of 300 students. And it's not that we don't want to help. Um, the emails are there uh, to answer questions of administrative nature or individual. We'll answer, uh, but where we'll answer, however, is on Teams. Right? Teams is going to be our main community discussion forum. Um, we'll have different channels for the different themes in the green lectures and in the yellow lectures. And uh, um, so um, it worked really well last year. Um, I hope it's going to work well this year as well. So all the discussion will happen on Teams. You can have a team app on your iPhone or, or, or another uh, Android as well or, or iPad or there's, there's, an, there's a desktop app for your computer. So you get all the information there in Teams and that's where we'll be able to discuss and, and help you and answer questions. Um, that's, that's the main, these are the main uh, uh, support areas. But 
There's something else I'll do every week, which I hope is uh, supportive. And uh, the, the students last year said was really, really useful and helpful. So I'll keep doing that this year as well. It's to give you an idea every week of what you're supposed to do. First, I encourage you to look in the course outline. There's a section saying you typical week, uh, your typical week as an ACTL 1101 student. And you probably know you're supposed to work about 10 hours for every course in, in every week on average. Um, so I break down how you should spend those 10 hours to do well in the course. Um, and what I'll do is I'll also give the details and talk about those things every single week. I'll send you an email um, on Teams and, and this one I'll probably send it from Moodle as well saying, here's what you're supposed to do next week. Right? So you can plan and have that in your calendar. Okay, I'm supposed to read this and that and here's what, I'm, what I have to do and so on. So I'll send that to you every week and hopefully that, that will help you get organized and do well in the course. That's it. So that's, that's the overview of the course. Uh, there's more information in the course outline. As you know, there's, there's a lot of, of rules and things you, you, you must know. So uh, please go on the course outline and read it all um, again. And um, I really look forward to meet you soon in the class. Or if we have already met you and you're still watching this video, that's great. But it means it was useful. But there's something I would like to encourage you to do. Um, can you... Well, if you want, right, you don't have to, but can you invite me on uh, LinkedIn? There's, there'll be a link here to my LinkedIn page. If you do that, the advantage is then we can keep in contact over the next few years. And if you put a picture of yourself, then I can start trying to learn, associate names with faces. I'll probably, you know, it's not going to work with all of you because you're more than 300, but I can try. And that, that will help me. Right? If, if you add me on LinkedIn and with your, photo, with your photograph, then I can start trying to learn your faces and, and your names and prob probably also a bit of your background. When you send me an invite, please make sure you say that you're a student of ACTL 1101 because I usually don't accept people I don't know, I haven't met. But if you're a student in the course, I'll, I'll accept you as a contact. So that's it. Please look at the course outline. Please come to the lectures. Um, we're, doing all, we're doing our best really to make it worth coming to. Um, if you think it's not worth coming to, um, or if there's any feedback you have about the course, there's one last thing I haven't mentioned yet, which is called Blue Pulse. Blue Pulse is a tool developed by UNSW that's going to be rolled out in all the courses, but um, right now it's only on demand. It's a, a system you can go on and there'll be a link on the website where you can leave feedback to me that's anonymous. I promise I have absolutely no way of knowing who wrote the, who wrote the, the feedback. It's the same as the, the My Experience um, surveys. Of course, if you say things that are abusive and it's illegal and so on, then someone uh, you know, up at the chancellery can track you down. But I, I really can't know who, who says the comments. And I really value feedback from the students about the course and things I can, might do better or not. If I disagree with you, then I'll explain why I'm doing the things the way I do them. But and in more than half of, of the instances when I get feedback from students, I can actually do something that goes their way, that goes your way, and change the way I run the course. So please have engaged in that discussion with me. Let me know how I can improve the course. I'm really trying to maximize what you get out of the course and, and you know, we might as well all have fun as well. So if there's anything I can do or in, uh, if I can improve the course in any way, please don't hesitate to go on Blue Pulse and give me feedback. So to clarify Teams, that's where we're going to ask questions about the course, answer them, discussions about some aspect of the course. Um, so the contents of the course to help you learn. If you've got feedback about how the course has been designed, its structure, the way I teach, you can't understand my accent or whatever, go in Blue Pulse and please give me the feedback. I really value it and I will take that into account. So, see you soon.